All right, hi students. We're starting week six of college algebra. So this is for April 27th through May 1st. This section begins with absolute value equations. So we're going to be solving equations that deal with absolute value. So you want to remember that the absolute value of any number, which is written like this, of any number, it's always referring to distance, the distance the number is from zero. So let me pause this for a minute. So the absolute value of x is the distance from zero to x on a number line. So here's our number line here. We have this example, the absolute value of x equals five. So we know that whatever x is, it's five units from zero. So of course you have your positive five units, but then you also have the negative five units. So the, the solution for both well, for this equation, is both negative 5 and 5. So here's our solution written out. Two different values, x equals 5, x equals negative 5. Here are the solutions on the number line. Notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 units from 0 to the left, 5 units from 0 to the right. So both negative 5 and 5 are solutions to this equation. All right, so now we're going to go over some properties of absolute value. So, if you have two numbers or a number and a variable being multiplied inside of the absolute value bars, it's equal to separating those two and taking the absolute value and then multiplying. So you can multiply inside first or you could separate the two and multiply, right? If you're dividing the same thing, if you have a fraction inside of the absolute value bars, it's the same thing as taking the absolute value of the top then taking the absolute value of the bottom and then dividing. And then if you have the absolute value of a negative number, it's always equal to the absolute value of its positive counterpart, right? So those are three properties we want to think about when we do these next examples. So for example two, letter A, we have the absolute value of 7x. So that goes with this property here. You can separate the 7 and the x. So it will be the absolute value of 7 times the absolute value of x. And we can simplify this further by saying the absolute value of 7 is just 7, right? But we cannot take the x out because we don't know the value. If it was a negative 1, then we want to have the absolute value around it so that we know it becomes positive. So since we don't have a value for x, we're going to just simplify this to 7 times the absolute value of x. So this is our simplified answer. So all we did was separate the 7 and the x into separate absolute value bars. Take the absolute value of 7, x has to remain inside. All right, next example. This time we have a negative 8y inside our absolute value. So we're going to separate it into two parts like we did before. So now we have an absolute value of negative 8 times the absolute value of y. The absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8, right? That's this property here, all right? And again, we cannot take the absolute value of the y because we don't know what value it is, if it's a negative or positive number, so we leave it in the absolute value bar. So 8 times the absolute value of y, right? Letter C. <clears throat> we have 6x squared, so we're going to separate that into two parts. So now we have the absolute value of 6 times the absolute value of x squared. Both of these can be simplified. The absolute value of 6 is just 6, and the absolute value of x squared is x squared. Now the reason we can drop the absolute value here is no matter what the value of x is, if it's positive or negative, when you square that number, it's going to always become positive. So the absolute value bars are not needed. You'll always get a positive result here. So our final answer is 6x squared. All right, letter D. We have a fraction with some variables. So first thing we want to do is just simplify everything inside. We can divide 8 by negative 4 to get negative 2. And then x over x squared will reduce to 1 over x. So this is going to be our result. All right, so I've simplified. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. And x over x squared leaves you with 1 over x. So there's an x left in the denominator. So now we can separate this using property B, right? So the absolute value of negative 2 over the absolute value of x, right? 
So now we have the absolute value of negative 2 over the absolute value of x, which will simplify to 2 over the absolute value of x. All right, so here's our final answer. Remember, it's just x alone inside of the absolute value bar. You must leave it there, okay? So now example 3, we're actually going into solving absolute value equations. In 2, we were just simplifying expressions. Now we're actually going to solve. So with the first one, when you think about it, you have the absolute value of x equals 6. You, you're thinking about a number that's 6 units from 0 on the number line. So of course, it's going to be 6, right? Because 6 is 6 units from 0. But then also going in the opposite direction, negative 6 is also 6 units. Alright, so our two solutions would be 6 and negative 6 because both are 6 units from x on the number line, from 0 on the number line, not x. Alright, example B, this time we have the absolute value of x equals 0. So we're thinking about a number that's 0 units from 0 on the number line. And of course, the only number that is that distance from 0 is 0. So for this problem, x equals 0. And I'm sorry, for the previous one, I did not write the set notation. All right, so in the curly braces, negative 6 and 6. With this one, our set notation would be 0. All right, and then our last example. So with this one, you got to think carefully. We want a number that's negative 2 units from 0. So can distance ever be negative? No. So when you get a problem like this where your absolute value is set equal to a negative number, there is no solution. So you would just write no solution and inside the curly braces you put the empty set. Alright, so anytime you have your absolute value equal to a negative number, that is not possible because distance cannot be negative, so there's no solution. Alright, so that's kind of what we've already gone over here. So now that we've done these three examples, is written out in words. So the absolute value principle for any positive number p and any algebraic expression x, the solutions of the absolute value of x equal p are those numbers that satisfy x equals negative p or x equals p. So that's similar to example a here. We said that x equals 6 and there was nothing to solve, right? And x equals negative 6. All right, anytime your absolute value equation is equal to zero, it's equivalent to the equation being set equal to zero. And then anytime your equation, absolute value of x equals a negative p or any number, then there's no solution. Okay, so let's look at these four examples here. So example one, we have the absolute value of all of this is equal to five. So that means whatever this is, Right, it's going to be 5 units from 0 on the number line. So that means that 2x plus 1 could be equal to 5, and it can also be equal to negative 5. So we have two equations to solve. So here are our two equations, and then you just simply solve them in two steps. Subtract 1 on both sides, and then divide by 2 on both sides. 